In this lecture, we talk about et al. morphisms. So, say we are given a regular map of smooth varieties. So, V and W are smooth varieties. Phi is the map which is going from V to W. So, this phi is et al. At certain point x on the variety, if the map on the tangent spaces is an isomorphism. So, you have tangent space of V and then you have tangent space of W and you have the map between them at this point x. So, we are saying this map is an isomorphism. So, in most cases, these uh, tangent spaces are very simple. They are just like affine spaces generated by some symbols like dxi. And this d phi of x is just then a matrix. In fact, a Jacobian matrix between these two uh, spaces. So, you just have a matrix here. And when we are talking about an isomorphism, we are just checking that the determinant of this Jacobian is non-zero. So, this will become more clear as we see certain examples. So, map phi is called et al. if it is et al. at all points of the variety V. So, first point uh, we want to make here is that it uh, could be the case that V and W are non-singular. Even then, you can define et al. maps. But then, both V and W have to be non-singular. So, in case you are given a map where, say, V is smooth and W is non-singular, so you can say right off the bat that that map is not et al. So, either the map has to be be between two non-singular varieties or two smooth varieties. So, we will give some examples later on and this thing will become uh, more clear. So, first important remark which is the intuition behind this et alness. So, in differential geometry, this et al, because this uh, Jacobian is non-zero, determinant of the Jacobian is non-zero. So, this et al means local isomorphism between these two varieties and this follows from the inverse function theorem. Now, although this is true in uh, differential geometry, et al means inverse uh, function theorem and therefore local isomorphism, this is not true in algebraic geometry. So, the intuitive idea in algebraic geometry is that this morphism should be unramified, number one, and number two, there is a talk about flatness. And uh, we will use uh, unramified and flatness in the definition uh, once we cover a few examples. So, uh, let us do some examples. So, the first example is, so say you're given a map phi from a n to a n. So, this is given as some vector a, which is a 1 to a n. So, this is an element of this. And this maps to a n via these n polynomials f 1, f 2, f n. And all these polynomials are in, uh, you can say something like k x 1 to x n. So, you can actually plug in these uh, points uh, 1 to n. So, standard regular map. So, this is et al. if and only if you take the Jacobian of this and then you take its determinant, it should be non-zero. So, this is standard example of et alness. So, this uh, one should always keep in mind to have it right off the bat when something in et alness comes about. And the second important example is to say phi is a map of smooth varieties. So, now I'm taking W to V. So, it's a map of smooth varieties. And uh, since you have a map of smooth varieties, you can have corresponding uh, ring maps, A to B. Now, notice the contravariance. So, this V will correspond to A and this W will correspond to B. So, A is the corresponding ring K of V and B is the corresponding ring K of W because there is a contravariance. So, now we are going to construct a special map. So, B is uh, built out of K of V. So, this a is instead of k of v and then you have these variables attached to it x1 to xr and this b is cut out by these polynomials f1 to fr so notice that this a itself is k of v so these two r's match so this r is same as this r so then phi is again at all if the jacobian is non-zero so now you're going to take jacobian of these r elements which we are defining so this comes from a a more general and important condition which we will consider now and then we will just consider uh, just one a of x and then you can inductively build such a thing so let phi be a morphism between smooth varieties and then you have say a corresponding rim ring map from a to b so again uh, recall there is a contravariance so this uh, b would correspond to w and a would correspond to v so you have a variety v here and then you have a a here 
So this B is cut out by say polynomials f1 to fr. So this A is essentially some ring of this form kx1 all the way to xn and then you have uh, this ideal generated by this uh, out from here. So say some ideal is generated here. So modulo this ideal will give you A. So this is the ring A. So not we what we are saying is that B, which is the corresponding ring, ring to W, is generated by A, you're adding a point Y to it, and then modulo outing some polynomial. So we are uh, constructing this ring A of Y. So what does this mean? This means that, uh, so this Y, when you attach to some ring, that means this is, uh, this is a polynomial ring, which is a, essentially corresponds to the space A1, which you can say is ky and here we have a which is this string so that means that this is coming from say v times some a1 so when you attach y to it so this is corresponding to a y so now obviously you have this map here so you will have this map here contravariance and then we are saying that you have this w right here so you have this map from w to v so you have this map from w to v and uh, then uh, from a y you have this projection map which is going to be a y and then you modulo out with respect to this f and obviously this inclusion map here so you have this map here so this w is actually contained in the within v times a of one now uh, this is important because this uh, then means uh, a certain kind of a flatness condition that you are able to embed uh, certain things inside now flatness is actually a very deep concept uh, and we will talk about it in a minute but uh, so we have this map f of y so this w is cut out by this f so uh, this construction you can find in the notes of algebraic geometry uh, by Milne those these are very famous notes they are available online so then he also has notes on et al cohomology he's also written a book so this is a very good uh, introduction in fact everything in this lecture is taken from uh, these notes so uh, this w defines this thing so essentially this a of y we said looks like this a looks like this kx1 to a xn and then i is this ideal and then you are adjoining y here and f here so again this map would be at all if this jacobian would be non-zero so again jacobian so f1 to fr jacobian is right here and then you add f to it so you have x1 to xn and then because you have y here you have a y here so you want the determinant of this to be non-zero so essentially we want this to be non-zero and this is non-zero um, so you're differentiating it y so this is non-zero so you take its derivative and whatever the coefficients are the coefficients are in x1 to xn but once you plug in a to them they become constant you take the derivative and then you evaluate it at b you want it to be non-zero so this will be non-zero you want this to be non-zero so again equivalent question is when it would be zero so again in Galba theory you know we, we take the differentials and we know that this is zero if and only if, if b is a multiple root so because if b is not a multiple root once you take the derivative it will destroy the uh, root but if it is a multiple root then even if you take the derivative the power would still be there so the above is zero if and only if b is a multiple root of uh, this polynomial here evaluated at b so so this b should occur something simply like this v minus b with the power of one so if it's power of uh, uh, power of 2 or power of 3 then even if you take a differential then it will still be a factor so that's why you want to destroy it so also this gives us that you know this kw over kv so you have this correspondence v to w so um, kw will lie over k of v this should be a finite separable extension this finite separable extension again comes from this lack of multiple roots so this gives that if kw over kv is a finite separable extension then this implies phi is et al 
Now, uh, before we end this slide, there is another remark which corresponds to this. So we said that, you know, in differential geometry, this non-zero determinant would mean that you have a inverse function theorem. And this inverse function theorem uh, gives you a local isomorphism. And we said this is not true for algebraic geometry. Let us see this. So say you're ma given a map phi from uh, a fine line to a fine line, but uh, you have taken zero out. So this map you're ma mapping x to x square so obviously you take the determinant of this uh, the Jacobian of this map so that is just 2x so this is 2x and since you've taken 0 out if characteristic is not 0 so this 2x will never be 0 so if uh, the characteristic of our field is uh, not 2 so this will never be 0 so this map is et al so this map is et al but in algebraic geometry this is not a local isomorphism because say you had there is some local isomorphism you think now if there is any such local isomorphism it will ha have to carry over to the corresponding ring maps from kx to kx and uh, because there is a correspondence in algebraic geometry between uh, these morphisms here and ring maps and such a map which goes x to x square will also have to carry x to x square so a map from x to x square this is not an isomorphism so since this is not an isomorphism you cannot have a local isomorphism because in algebraic geometry you have this correspondence uh, between these morphisms and the corresponding ring map so if this is an iso this has to be an iso but we know this is not an iso so this will not be an isomorphism so now let us come to uh, schemes uh, and uh, give a more used uh, definition of etalness but this definition is uh, best for intuition so we will first start by defining flatness so consider a short exact sequence of a modules so 0 to n1 to n2 n3 0 and let m be an a module so then you can apply this functor m tensor with this and whenever you tensor it as a covariant functor so this functor is right exact so essentially that means it preserves the zero on the right so anyway the arrows are going out so this zero here is preserved and uh, there is no injectivity this uh, functor is only right exact it will not have a zero coming in so in case this functor is exact that is this zero is also preserved so in case you can put a zero here so in general you cannot put the zero but in case you can put a zero here then the, you can say this m module m is flat so it is faithfully flat if it is if it preserves the zero and in addition to that it satisfies this extra condition so m tensor with n this is 0 would imply n is also 0 so first it has to be flat and then it should preserve this extra condition so this flatness looks very simple but it has a very uh, deep uh, meaning in algebraic geometry so I don't have uh, time in this lecture to talk about it but if you are talking about flatness just looking at this definition doesn't uh, do justice to it so in the book geometry of schemes by Eisenberg and Harris on page 71 they have talked about flat families of schemes and how flatness is some kind of a limiting process on the fiber so we have lectures on fiber so you can understand what fiber is and then see what the limiting process is for flatness so this flatness is uh, very uh, deep uh, but the definition here is very simple so now an A algebra B is flat if B is flat as an A module so obviously you have a map like this so you can make B into an A algebra by the element Phi of A coming in here and then you can consider B as an A module and then uh, you you have to consider B is flat that means it is flat as an A module so A algebra B is flat if B is flat as an A module so again we are given a morphism F like this F A to B so local uh, of local rings so local ring means that obviously the ideal here should get mapped to ideal here so this map is unramified if maximal ideal here gets mapped to maximal ideal here so m of a you apply f to it gets mapped to m of b, maximal ideal of b and then you have a finite separable field extension b over this this field so there is a maximal ideal here so you modulo this uh, ideal out you get a field say f1 and from here you modulo out this your maximal ideal m of a this gets mapped to here this is this so this is field 2 so 
this uh, f1 over f2 is a finite separable field extension so this just comes from number theory so these unramified maps have been covered in algebraic number theory and there are quite a few of lecture on this uh, my channel itself on unramified morphisms and in uh, how it behaves in algebraic number theory so this is just that thing so now we come to a uh, morphism of schemes and uh, talk about etalness so at the scheme level so uh, say you're given a morphism of schemes so this phi is a morphism from scheme x to scheme y and uh, we say this is unramified if the uh, maps at the stock level are unramified so what does it mean so you take a point x in x and then you know this f of x you apply some f to it it gets mapped to y so here we are using phi so you can say phi of x gets mapped to some point y of this ring y here so then you have stocks so you have this uh, contravariance so corresponding to the stock here you have this ring corresponding to this point here you have this ring so the stock here is this this here local ring here is this so this uh, should be unramified so just like you have a morphism a to b so these are stocks these are local rings so these two are local rings corresponding to these local points so these should be unramified just like this morphism f of local rings is unramified so this should be unramified this is number one number two this morphism phi should be of finite type so this is just morphism of finite type of schemes and then we should have a flatness so flatness again you have this map should be flat that basically means again this so this o x comma small x this stock this is b so this is you can consider as so this you can consider as this module because essentially because of this map uh, you can call it uh, yeah so a algebra B so now you have O Y algebra O X and then you can say you can consider this as this module and then talk about flatness just like this statement here so a morphism phi of schemes is et al if it is flat and unramified so that is it flatness comes from uh, here and then you have unramified coming from here so basically you have to check locally so these are all local conditions so uh, let us write it in a more understandable format which you can actually check so say you're given a ring morphism a to b so when is this ring morphism at all so corresponding to this ring morphism you know that there you have the scheme map spec b to spec a so we are going to say this morphism is at all so you have to do essentially this so what does it mean number one phi is of finite type that means b is finitely generated a algebra so this map already makes b as an a algebra so this map means b is an a algebra so it is a finitely generated a algebra because this we are going to ask that phi is of finite type so morphism of uh, phi of schemes is at all if it is flat and unramified so one condition of unramified we have done is that it is finite type then uh, there is uh, flatness so this flatness is just simple this b is flat as an a algebra and third is we have to check these conditions of unramifiedness so you take a maximal ideal m in b so now these are no longer no longer local rings these are local rings so we have to check this condition on local rings stock by stock so you take a maximal ideal m and b and corresponding to it there is a maximum so take a maximal ideal here so if this map is surjective take its inverse image that's also going to be a maximal ideal so this inverse image is a and then you uh, check it for every stock this should be unramified so this the stock is so this is b over mb but but here b is a local ring here b is not a local ring so we have to make it a local ring first so you localize it with respect to the maximal ideal and that gives you the stock so this is our corresponding local ring and then you just like this here you have this here 
so you modulo out with the maximal ideal and then you make this a is not a local ring you make it into a local ring by localizing it at the maximal ideal modulo out with the ideal and this should be a finite separable field extension just like here finite separable field extension so that is how you check if a ring homomorphism is at all so basically you just check this unramifiedness and uh, flatness and to make everything simple you have b as a finitely generated a algebra so this finitely generated is coming from this finite tap type map so this is the uh, most useful definition for and most general definition for uh, et al maps so just you can check how a ring homomorphism is et al